Hello everyone, this is Christy with MyScrapbookEvolution.com and it's time to take a look at Prompt 6 of the Stencilfy Journal Project. Just to quickly recap, this is a project hosted by Tina Walker and she is a columnist for the Stencil Girl blog. I am not affiliated or compensated by Stencil Girl in any way. I'm just kind of doing this for fun. If you're looking for prompts one through five, you can find those on my YouTube channel or on the My Scrapbook Evolution blog. For prompt six, we were asked to stencil a page and poke holes in it. So once again, I'll be working in this upcycled art class catalog as my art journal. I've kind of taken a look at the page behind it knowing that I'm going to be poking holes in the page and I was looking to carry some of the color from that page onto this one but also find some color that contrasted with it. So I ended up choosing a purple, a green, and an orange. My first attempt at punching holes in the art journal page was a complete disaster. I had glued two of the art journal pages together to reinforce it. I wanted to make sure that the page had a good structure if it was going to have holes in it. And this first punch just didn't want to punch through all those layers. I ended up with a partially ripped out design. I was able to fix it by cutting a little bit around it with some smaller scissors. So I ended up then coming back in with another punch to punch the rest of the holes and they are the same brand. They're both by Fiskars. This one did the job a little bit better. If you need to, because this is inside the journal, you may find that you're going to have to bend the page back a little bit. Um, that way you're having your punch laying on a hard surface and you probably are going to need to stand up to get enough force on the punch to get through the multiple layers. To hide the rough edges of that one bad punched hole, I ended up just going back in with this Posca paint pen and outlining the edge of each circle. And this also gave it a little bit of definition to kind of help that circle pop up out of the background. Now I'll be working with two stencils today from Stencil Girl. This is the Art Deco Medallion. In a little bit you will see the Art Deco Sunburst Corners. You've seen this stencil before on some of my other projects. It's a favorite of mine. I find that it's very versatile. I am working though instead with the Posca Paint Pen. Previously I've used ink, usually a gel ink or a waterproof ink. While the ink is a little more precise and it doesn't tend to bleed as easily, it does tend to leave pen strokes on the page. So I wanted to use the Posca paint pen in an attempt to get rid of the look of the pen strokes. It's just like a little indentation that you would see on the paper. The problem with the Posca paint marker is that it can bleed a little bit. And if you don't want anything to bleed onto the finished art journal page, that, that art journal page that you're going to see when you look through those holes, you'll need to put a piece of scrap paper in between both pages and that's what I've done here. It also helps to use a little bit of masking tape to tape the stencil down and keep it very very flat and you just want to work slowly, carefully, and steadily. Don't be afraid to rotate your art journal around. And that way you don't put your hand in anything or you don't press and kind of squeeze that paint in further under the stencil than where you would want it to go. Once your design is dry, you can continue on with the next stencil. And you've seen me do this before and there's Pixie investigating my work, sorry about that. You've seen me work before with multiple stencils and you've heard me talk about how I consider stencils to be a tool and you take the parts of the stencil that work for your, your design. You have a little bit of creative license. A lot of people tend to view a stencil as a whole part and not as a series of parts that can be made and remade into different designs. So here I'm just kind of working on making an art deco style sun to be featured as the main part of the background for my art journal page. So now it's time for me to add the stitching to my page and you'll see me here just opening the journal up 
so that I can lay it flat on the foam board. And I'm just using a paper piercer to add holes strategically throughout. Wherever one hole is on one side of the circle, I have one opposite it on the other. And I'm just using regular embroidery floss. And I kind of just loop it and knot it in and I stitch back and forth. Now you're probably thinking, what about any design on the back of the page? How will I use it later on for a second art journal page? What I did on the back, which I really don't show in this video, is that once it was completed, I went ahead with some matte medium and some tape and I sealed down the extra ends of my thread. And that will allow me to use it for future projects while also securing it to the page. One of my projects this year is a continuation from last year actually. I'm working on portraits and I'm currently taking a class in which I'm learning to create quirky characters. They're not realistic, they're just for fun. And so I decided to do a little practice here in my art journal. I drew in my character with a white ink tense pencil. If you're not familiar with those, when you activate them, you get a little bit of ink or you, you get with a little bit of water, you get like an inked, more clear design. If you don't activate them, it looks a little bit by, like crayon. And you can see my cat does get on my desk, so I prefer to work with as many non-toxic items as possible. I let my cats roam around my studio all the time, I really like having them with me. So anyway, I'm just kind of doing this back and forth, practicing my skin tones. I do pull some of the colors up from the background and I kind of also like creating a wash out of my acrylic so I can see a little bit of that background blended in with the character. But at the same time, the acrylics and the ink kind of help her pop up a little bit out of the page. So now I'm just going to speed things up a little bit so you can watch her come completely to life. Here's a little bit of a closer look at that stitched sun and you can see the background from the other page behind it and a completed look at the entire project. You can see these pictures as well on the My Scrapbook Evolution blog. I'll be linking to the post in the notes for this video. And now it's your turn to play along with the prompt. If you create something using prompt six, be sure to share a link to your project in the comments for either the video or on the My Scrapbook Evolution blog post. If you're curious what everyone else is doing, search for hashtag the stencilfied journal and don't forget to stop by Tina Walker's blog to see her take on the project. I'll have a link for that as well in the video notes. 